What's up? I'm here with Kate Envy, one of my favorite current musicians, active now. Um, yeah, Kate is a singer, a musician, an illustrator. You, you were like previously like a student of architecture, just all around amazing artists. Kate, thank you for chatting with me. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Awesome. <laughs> I know you've been in New York for some time now. You did a show here, I want to say, in early April. Um, so how have you been enjoying your time in New York this time around? Oh, it's actually very cool, but very intense. Uh, particularly this week was insane. It's still, it's still happening. But um, lots of shows and lots of concerts, even on Mondays and Tuesdays. <laughs> and I've never been to this kind of environment before. Because like, usually you at least have Monday when you can actually breathe and like <laughs> work. <laughs> But yeah, I was like, I need to go here and there. And like this week was um, uh, particularly hard because I got invited into lots of shows that were like happening simultaneously, like literally on the same day, same time. And I'm like, wow, I need to choose. And I have like uh, insane FOMO. <laughs> <laughs> Probably New York is the worst place to oh. be. <laughs> but yeah, I'm learning to choose, but it's still very hard. And it's like... And also, I'm like kind of easygoing, so sometimes when people text me like, "Hey, I'm going here," like, uh, "Would like would you like to come?" and I'm like, "Yeah, sure," and I just cycle. And also, like, the city is huge, and cycling somewhere sometimes like it takes takes like an hour. Or so, and um, yeah, the the week was in, in intense, but I loved it. Have you seen any bands since you've been here that you've that you really like? Yes, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I got so obsessed. Like, this is the this is now my favorite band ever uh, since since the day before yesterday. It's like literally the best band in the world. And I accidentally got to, to a concert because I my friend uh, Zach, who plays in another amazing band, uh, he invited me to go to one concert. And then he's like, you know what? Like, there's another one happening. Like, would you want to go? And I was like, yes. And I, did, I, I knew nothing about the band. I was just like, I was like, I'll just go. And it was insane. It's so good. And they playing three shows in a row, uh, like three, three days in a row. I mean, like yesterday, day before yesterday, and today is the last day. It's like their 10 years anniversary. And I'm like, oh my God, this band exists in New York and nobody, it's like, nobody ever told me about this band. And I'm like telling people about it. And they're like, yeah, they're my friends. And I'm like, why don't you? Wait, what band is this? Oh do you God. know the name of them? I know the name, and it's like I always, I'm kind of, I don't want to mess up. I, I need no, to. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Cause like it's, <laughs> it's not in English, and I don't even know how to pronounce it correctly. Oh Tradici Bachi. Tradici Bachi is name of the, the band. Best band in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to listen to it. Um, you, you're gonna have to come, cause like today is the last show, and like you need to come to the show. It's just like, it's, it's pure happiness. It's like a band with like. 15 or 20 people like there's like a, an amazing string section section horns and like piano like bass drums uh, guitar like amazing singer it's so insane and it's just like people involved they really love just playing music and you can tell and it's amazing when people are so happy performing our like faces hurt from smiling it's like literally you sit there and like you smile all the time this is like I, I <laughs> they didn't hire me for PR but I genuinely <laughs> love them no that's amazing like, the best band I, my favorite band everyone in New York should know about, should know about this band because this is like I'm just happy to be in the same city with them like sharing the wow. same ground <laughs> it's like so honored <laughs> it's just a gem I mean I'm so excited that I just randomly you know discovered it and the funniest thing is that the guy uh, who started the band uh, 10 years ago he actually uh, recorded the strings to one of the tracks where I'm in, and uh, this is like a band from Belarus, Belarusia. Like, it's, it's, I mean, like they're my friends, and I have like a, we have a track together, and so like sort of connected. And I had no idea that this is like the guy who did the strings, and yeah. Wow, a really small world. Mm -hmm. How like especially in music, people yeah. are just and like especially like, when it's so digital or everything can happen like on the internet like yeah. so many bands from around the world are connected and have worked together so I'm gonna have to check out Tradici Bachi. I know that your memory from when you were young goes back like to when you were super young like I I heard that I heard like a, an interview where 
you like you started speaking at age one yes. and then you started like um, singing and drawing at age two yes. I'm curious to know like if there were if there are any songs or pieces of music that you remember from when you were young that that you remember like really having a lasting impression on you Ooh, or like blowing your mind when you were like really young when I was like two <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Oh, oh, little baby, little baby Kate. Uh, oh my God. Well, I've been listening to lots of uh, I don't know kids songs, but I remember when I was uh, I went to um, preschool thing at the age of five or something, and um, I think we listened to lots of Prokofiev. <laughs> it's just, I know it wow. so, sounds very pretentious probably, <laughs> but yeah. But I mean Prokofiev has um, Peter and Wolf. Uh, it's mm -hmm. like a yeah fairy tale yeah. and um, there's even the version narrated by David Bowie so it's like it's a popular popular piece and uh, I really loved it like I love it since I was like super young kid and it's amazing I still love this uh, music to this day Prokofiev is actually my favorite Russian composer mm -hmm. I think so yeah. so yeah and uh, yeah probably this thing but also it's like my parents used to listen to lots of like 80s pop music and uh, yeah, and like some old school simple jazz. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's that's so interesting. Like this, you know, like listening to like classical composers, but also like the influence of your parents and the music that they were listening to, and then also just like being a kid and like listening to kids' music. It's just like a beautiful uh, like synthesis of a lot of different sounds. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you're from. Kazan, that's your hometown, and that's in Tartarstan? Tartarstan, yes. Yeah, and then, but you moved to Moscow. Yes. I'm curious to, like, hear about maybe, like, the music you were listening to when you were in Kazan versus when you were in Moscow. Like, did did you have a preference for, like, did they have, like, a huge, like, scene presence when it comes to music in either place? I mean, Moscow probably, definitely, but, um, like, what music were you consuming when you were in Kazan versus Moscow? Well, it's a um, well, good question because I went for lots of different stages and not really connected to uh, s to the cities, mm -hmm. I guess. But of course, I had like lots of friends, musicians, and when I started making music in Kazan, I I got a lot of new friends. Uh, they were making different music, and I was listening to their music, of course. But um, yeah, it's just because I've, I've been studying in music school for eight years and I was really involved in classical music mostly mm -hmm. and I started listening to regular pop, let's say, or rock, whatever, like radio stuff, pretty late. <laughs> it's like 2004 probably was the year when I was actually, oh yeah, it's actually cool, pop music. <laughs> and um, yeah, it sounds also very nerdy, but no, um, no. yeah. It's just happened. How it ha yeah, it's how yeah, it it's happened. Just, yeah um, I don't know. Um, yeah, I have I have some awkward stories about me like discovering pop music at the age of I don't know sixteen. Yeah. <laughs> what music did you really love when you were a teenager? Mm, just I think everyone goes through that stage in their life when they listen to sort of like pop rock mm -hmm. or like. Um, indie rock because I, I was growing up when like all this indie uh, scene was like <sighs> yeah um, uh, yeah like from UK I mean I remember my friends and I when Arctic Monkeys just like appeared on the you know <laughs> on the scene we're like wow this is amazing because they just like I really enjoyed like first dem demo versions of all the tracks because they were very dirty and mm -hmm. like um not like well produced or whatever it's just like yeah raw raw yeah and i was like really into that kind of scene like indie pop pop bands and like i remember uh i met a lot of friends because we all been listening and started listening to franz ferdinand, ferdinand mm, at, yeah. at some point and um yeah it's just like very regular stuff mm -hmm. but then uh what what happened next is just like i met up with amazing people from far east russia and Far East Russia is really far. <laughs> it's actually close to China and Japan. And all these people, just because they live very close to China and Japan, they are hugely influenced by 
both cultures mm -hmm. and uh, even like the food they eat like they all like all have Japanese cars and like wow. they're really into anime and stuff and they've been digging lots of like Japanese music and that was a moment when internet uh, slowly became like faster mm -hmm. and uh, well at least you could actually put something on, on download like for the whole night and then in the morning you'll have like I don't know 20 tracks yeah. <laughs> and you'll be like oh my <laughs> god 20 <laughs> tracks and uh yeah and like very low quality but still you have it and um yeah so we started downloading stuff and like they started listening to japanese music from like early 2000s and through that kind of music from shina ringo we like moved to 80s and that was the moment when we we're like whoa mm -hmm. this is insane and like also it was the moment there's like we caught this moment like without Google Maps <laughs> being here and like Google Translator uh, not being here and like you and th there was a moment we went to different blogs online with all these like Japanese records and we couldn't even translate the names because like there's no option like that like that and uh, we would just download stuff because we love the cover <laughs> yeah like, randomly and they're like wow this is amazing but you don't even know how like how to translate the name of the band because you just don't have this option like yeah and um we we got this moment like downloading lots of lots of bands without any idea of, like what they were like no Wiki wikipedia pages or whatever it's like you cannot find information about them those uh, people so yeah and uh, we've been just like randomly discovering stuff and that was amazing because like later it became huge like i mean six or seven years later all of the all of the bands that we genuinely loved at that point like they became huge like they got reissued like people got really into them which is amazing but it was also like wow this is so crazy because yeah. like we downloaded it just because we like randomly yeah. did this and yeah I know that you also just like love Japanese music and it really influences the music that you make. I find that that's like a, a constant throughout your very different albums is yeah. the influence of Japanese music. Um, yeah, what are some of your favorites? I also have a question about a specific album that you mentioned one time. But yeah, d before I get into that, what are some of your favorite uh, Japanese artists, albums, just yeah. music in general? Okay. Uh it's a lot. I mean, it, it's always like people ask me this question, but it's like it's it changes all the time because like you also like with music, I go through different like stages. I also have like a crazy ADHD, so <laughs> like I go th through my hyper obsessions and like that once it's over, and you're like, oh, okay, <laughs> I need a new one. But yeah, it's just like throughout the years, uh, it's been a lot of like crazy, crazy music, but right now probably it's Kidoriko um, and uh, yeah I don't know like you can you probably can find some albums on YouTube mm -hmm. so the band is called Kidoriko and uh, one of my favorite it's not a band it's just like one guy and he I think the album is just like music for the video game or something it's like a library music whatever he's called Expo mm -hmm. and it's impossible yeah it's about. impossible to find this this thing because like I remember 10 years ago I found like one video on Japanese version of YouTube but it's gone now you cannot actually google it it's so hard to google it also the names like Expo mm -hmm. um, it's, so, it's just too broad yeah, yeah it's like you cannot you cannot find it online and uh, this is one of my favorite albums because it's like so funny ridiculous like it's also like so many artificial like orchestra playing but also like live instruments like all mixed together and the arrangements are so funny and high level of irony which i love and uh yeah i love i love this album it's just like a ridiculous one I, I love it still like to this day one of my favorites so yeah i also wanted to ask you about this japanese album that i listened because you recommended it because i forget his first name but it's um Kazumura? Nabukatsu, Nabukatsu Takimura. Yes, Takimura. He is also, uh, also one of my favorites. And like, we actually, when we started listening to Shinaringa and it's 2000s, mm -hmm. we switched to Nabukatsu pretty fast because like, it's also like early 2000s. Mm -hmm. And it's also like very connected to IDM music, mm -hmm. like clicks and cuts and stuff like yeah. that. But in a, 
in a like I mean in a very Japanese way I guess like it's very toyish and like it's also an era when Katamari was released as a video game and this yeah. is my favorite video game like of all times literally like the best one and uh, music is so amazing it's just like it has a lot of like cool sounds I mean probably it's my ADHD brain that's why I like it but also it's just very it's very complex but it's very easy to listen to and it's very I don't know uh, organically evolving into something and it's very jazzy at the same time it has melodies and it's weird but still like very like has a lot of nice hooks uh, melodic hooks and it's just yeah amazing music yeah when I listened to that Kazumura album I didn't even think to connect that music with Sheena Ringo because I love that Sheena Ringo album that has like the t I don't I think the title is obviously in Japanese but it's like it has the teacup on the cover oh yeah this is one of my favorites like it's also two like 2000s yes and mm -hmm. it's like a cool combination of like also like sort of you can hear the influence of IDM mm -hmm. and like all this kind of music that was very popular like n late 90s but it's at the same time it's very pop and I like it. I love it. Yeah. Also, like, she has an amazing album where, um, well, actually, this is this one. Uh, it's, like, a nice combination of uh, orchestra arrangements mm -hmm. and, yes. like, this electronic music. This is the best thing ever. This is where I would love to be. And I'm so bad with, like, I mean, like, I've never even tried to orchestrate things and I don't know how to do that. This is my dream to also like to reach this kind of level and to create something like that. This is like the ultimate goal like for the next album, I guess. I would love to do some something like that. Yes. Yeah, that album is incredible. It's so ambitious. But yeah, how it like combines like art pop and the orchestral arrangements, but also a lot of like uh, digitized sounds. It's yeah. just incredible. Highly recommend. I'll like put it on the videos somewhere. But um, but yeah, the. Takamura album. Yeah. I listened to Tenth, and this is the best one. The best one. The, you should all listen to this uh, album. It's a iconic, legendary <laughs> record. Yeah, when I listened to it, I immediately s heard parallels between that the music on that album and especially the music that makes up Wow. Like, yeah. you know, like the toyish, playful elements. Um, but yeah, like I definitely hear a lot of IDM on that record, on the on tenth at the Kazu the Takamura album. But yeah, I definitely see how he might have been a big in influence on your music and especially the latest record, Wow, which I do want to mention and talk about. Um, wow came out in March, yes. I want to say, of this year. But a lot of people might not know this, but it was actually like years in the making, and it's and it's an older album. I feel like you started making it in 2016, yeah, and some, then some of the tracks are pretty old. I think the one of the like couple of tracks are like in yeah, a couple of tracks actually are from 2015. There is one from 2014. Wow. Yeah, it's like it's like a collection of tracks, <laughs> collected ambient works. Uh, it's, it's <laughs> yeah, but it's true. It's just like a collection of tracks throughout the years. And I finished the record in 2019, so it was like fully ready. Mm -hmm. And um, wow. then for some reasons, like like many reasons, different reasons, we had to like postpone the release um, for a couple of years. And now it's here finally. But yeah. Finally, finally. Were you um, working on the songs on WOW and Room for the Moon at the same time? Yeah, yes, yes, at the same time. I was like, when I make music, I never force it mm. uh, to be something else. Like, m music just sh sort of tells me uh, what it would like to be. And um, if it's a song, it's a song. If it's a track, it's a track. Also, like, um, I jump be in between the projects all the time. Probably because I have ADHD. I don't know. It's like I cannot recommend this approach, but like it works for me pretty well. Um, so yeah, just like uh, it depends on my mood. And I just realized that I have like tracks in one in one particular vibe, and like other tracks in that like have different vibe. And I just decided to separate them, like put them in two different baskets. And then I just realized like one is like one album, and the other one is like the other album because like they have the similar vibe they're a little bit different but yeah and um i just 
I just finished it like it happened that I just finished that both records simultaneously it's like just because I love to you know jump from one project to another like so I never get bored you know which is very which is very important for a person with ADHD you know <laughs> you know even when I look at all of your albums and and listen to each of them you're never one to like limit uh like the like where your sound can go you're always willing to experiment and like change things up and totally like you know just switch things around which keeps me super intrigued by you as an artist and like what makes me love your music so much is that I never know what to expect next from you and it's all incredible so um I am a big fan but I also know that you just started a new band with Angel Deridurian yes. Deridurian um Decisive Pink uh, the new album Ticket to Fame. Yeah, I love the record. I, I hear a lot of um, overlap between your own solo stuff and the music on this project. Um, how did you two meet and, and what made you want to start making music together? It's a, it's a, I think it sounds crazy of like, it's, it sounds like, it feels so natural to me, but like we met in Tokyo. <laughs> We met in Tokyo during Rebel Music Academy in 2014. Oh yeah, and it's just like amazing because like the academy gave me so much, and I'm like, like grateful to my core to those people who actually invited me, and I got in because I got so many friends, including Angel. And um, it's interesting because the academy itself was very, very intense while we were in Tokyo, and we didn't have a proper chance to make music together because like two weeks and it's like yeah. it's like you we can barely like it was it, we didn't even have have time to sleep <laughs> literally it was so so intense uh, oh. most of the time um and yeah but then later uh they also invited us for another additional program here in new york in 2016 uh like two years later uh almost two years and um i was there and she was also here and uh we both got invited for a week, spend a week in the studio here in Chelsea, um, and uh, yeah, because they used to have like a Rebel Arts uh, thing, like some somewhere around Chelsea mm -hmm. area, and um, so yeah, we spent a week together just in studio, like eight people from different terms, uh, and me and Angel like from one term, and we just like started making a track together. It was just like a thing, like we just hanged, and then. Um, she traveled to, uh, she was in Europe for a vacation and she like just texted me and I was in Kiev actually Ukraine together with my boyfriend at the time and she's like hey are you like busy right now like what are, what are you up to and I'm like I don't know like whatever and she's like let's just go somewhere like maybe record some stuff together and I was like yeah sure I'm I'm down to like this is this is the the, the thing I'm like really kind of like people call me like hey I'm going to a gig I, like want to go and I'm like yeah sure <laughs> that was the thing she just like literally texted me saying like let's just jam and uh, we texted our rebel friends and they were like yeah we have a studio come to Cologne that's how we just like randomly decided to just make some music together and um we just really enjoyed it like and uh we started started uh, first sketches and then we came back later properly and we almost finished the whole record uh together we spent like two or three weeks in cologne and then and then it was just because it was very intense for her and for me like she was finishing her own stuff i was finishing my own stuff and like i was also touring we kind of skipped one year and a half and then the pandemic happened <laughs> that's why that's why it's like it takes it took us so long to finish the record because we started in 2018 long wow. time ago yes it was almost done and we just needed to record the vocals and we wanted to do that together not like separately in different countries and but it's interesting because i came to angel's place in la early 2022 and uh, we finished Dopamine and uh, Destiny. We actually started wow. started Destiny from scratch in LA, and we finished Dopamine, though we didn't have a plan to finish this track. Uh, but it tur turned out very well, and I'm so grateful that we actually had those years in between the tracks because, you know, like, we had some time, like, we developed our personal personality 
personalities. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um, so yeah, and uh, kind of, I mean, if we finished everything in 2018, dopamine would never happen. And I love this track, so I'm happy that we had those years in between, because like now we have this track. And um, yeah, so this is the story of Decisive Thing. <laughs> yeah, I love, I really love the record so much. And, you know, Dopamine and Destiny are two of my favorite songs on the album now that I'm thinking about it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's so cool how you two came together almost 10 years ago at yeah, the Red yeah, Bull Music so. Academy in Tokyo, right? Mm -hmm. In like 2014. Um, and then you just kind of naturalistically came together and started making music. And I love the name BTW. I love... I love Decisive Pink. Like when I heard about the new project and that was the name, I was like, oh my gosh, of course this is an amazing name. Hate Envy does it again. I I just love the record. Um, so if you haven't listened to Wow, you should definitely listen to it. If you're, you should definitely listen to the Decisive Pink record as well, Ticket to Fame. It just came out. Both of those records are two of my favorites of the year so far. And I'm always so excited to see where you're going to go musically. I'm hoping to see you live very soon, but also no pressure if you're like focusing on making music. But yeah, I mean, just thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. And yeah, Kate and V, everyone, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Okay, cool.